So if you're an emotional person, like someone who cries or like um, gets really, really emotional, get you a friend. Um, get someone you can vent to. Um, it could be an ex, um, an ex that you maybe are still in good terms with or, you know, that guy that wants you, you know, that, that um, guy that, you know, wants you, but he hasn't been able to get you yet. Um, he's going to listen to you. Or um, just a friend, you know, talk to them about your issues. Talk to them about your your struggles, if you will, that you're going through as you're changing. Because you need to talk. When you, If you need to talk about it with somebody, talk about it with someone who is not um, invested in that way in your, in your change. Uh, or who is not going to, who you don't really care about, like, um, hurting. Not that you're going to hurt them, but like, Usually it's family members that you care about more, uh, hurting more than anybody else. And if you have an ear, like somebody who is like, yeah, like I said, a friend, somebody who can listen to you, talk to them while you, otherwise you're going to flip. You know, when, while you're in this um, change process and you start saying no to people that you've never said no to, people are going to come after you by, by like, who do you think you are? You know, wanting to get you to get, to become crazy. You know, you don't, don't allow that, you know. So all those emotions that you're keeping inside, that anger, that, that stress, that, <laughs> that resentment, talk about that resentment. Take that resentment and talk about it with somebody else, you know, a friend that is not in your family, you know, that's what I mean. So you can get it off your chest, you know, before you slap somebody, you know. <laughs> so, or you go for a run or a walk. If you like running, do that, you know. If you like going to the gym, do that. If you like, if you like take, going for a walk, do that. Go, get the stress out of you, you know. If you like sleeping, go sleep. Do whatever you can to help you. Um, okay, the other thing I also wanted to talk about is um, this... Um, uh, is this... Reluctance, I don't know whether I should call it reluctance uh, or resistance, yeah, to change. Uh, some women and some men too, let me just say some people, uh, find it very hard to change because they feel like they're not going to stick it out. They're not going to be able to, to do it long term. Like I said, change, it can take time. It doesn't have to take that long. It can, it can happen in a month or even two weeks. Um, but sometimes we feel that, you know, we, we're not going to be able to go through it. We're not going to be able to handle it. And so we resist it. We, we, we already think at the back of our minds, I'm not going to be able to do this, you know. Um, so let me not just bother. Like I said in the, in the other video, when I ask you to go and do something, I know what I'm talking about. If you don't do it and then you come back and say, well, this doesn't work. You haven't even done it. How do you know it doesn't work? Don't be resistant to suggestions when people give you suggestions when you want to change because it might just work because it worked for them. It doesn't mean that whatever worked for somebody else might, might necessarily work for you, but it could work for you. But you have to go and try it um, before you complain about it. So, um, you, like I said, you have to want to install boundaries. You have to want to kill this perfect little girl in you more than you want to be um friends with your with your friends that are also doing the same thing more than you want to be this this little girl still that wants to uh, complain and blame everybody you have to realize that you are an addict you are addicted to this persona you're addicted to be to people pleasing you're addicted to not saying no and you're getting benefits from that you know we don't do anything that doesn't benefit us. You're getting benefits from that. That's why you're still there. That's why you're still doing it. And I'll tell you some of the benefits that you're getting. Um, the reason why you, why you let your family or your friend or whoever um, tell you to do things for them and you say yes, even when you mean no, is because you want to, you want to be involved in their, in their shit. You know, you want to be involved in their in their things, and you because that makes you feel valued. It makes makes you feel included. So what you're thinking is, well, let me just say yes because you know if I if I say no, then I'm gonna be alone. I'm gonna be by myself, and I don't want that. I want to be included in their in their things. 
So I'm going to say yes, whatever they give me. So that's the benefit you're getting from it. That's why you don't say no. But you have to stop. You, when you say, when you, you have to want to, want to be by yourself, if it takes that more than wanting to be included. And you have to think of the benefit, you know, beyond that. What is the benefit that I'm going to get after this? You know, that's what, that's what's going to help you stick through your change. And the benefit you're going to get that from this is that your family is going to stop asking. They're going to stop asking you to babysit for them for free. They're going to stop asking you to borrowing money from you or asking you to do things that you don't want to do. You know, they're going to just stop, you know, they're going to talk about you at the beginning, but they're going to stop and eventually they're going to respect your boundaries. You know, the other thing is, um, the other thing that you're getting from this, the reason why you, you find it difficult to change is like, you like the drama of being treated poorly. You like the drama of, yeah, of being treated poorly. And then, because when you, when you, um, when you get treated poorly and you get triggered like that, you can talk about it. You, you have something to talk about to your friends too. This is what he did to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? Blah, blah, blah. This is what he, but wait until I see him. This is what I'm going to do. You know, are you, do you, are you understanding? You know, you can relate to them. You have something to talk about, you know, you, you know, my husband did this to me, but I'm going to talk, I'm going to, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to handle it. Wait, I'm going to go do, you know, all of that drama. You like that drama. That's, that's why you like staying in that position where you don't have boundaries. Because when you have boundaries, you're not going to allow certain things. But when you don't allow those things, then you won't have anything to talk about with your friends. So that's why you allow it. Um, that, and that's the benefit you're getting from it. But you have to think of the benefit beyond having boundaries in that way. When you have uh, boundaries um, in terms of you know, getting better dates, like getting men who are like a, a little bit better in terms of the way they treat you, you know, you think, think of that, getting, going to better dates, going, going to, going to better places rather than a guy taking you to, I don't know, McDonald's or what do we have here? You know, that, that have some of the places that you don't want, want to go to, you know, the benefit is that when you have boundaries, you have guys that will take you to better places. You know, you have, you will enter relationships where you're treated better, you know. Um, the other benefit you are getting from, you know, allowing yourself not to have boundaries is you like associating with your friends that also have no boundaries and you don't want to lose them. When you go out with friends or when you have friends that all are, all of them are treated or maybe one of them are treated like that, like the same way how you're being treated in your relationship or in your family and you don't have boundaries, you know, when you're with them, you want to relate to them. You want to have something to say when they say, this is what he did. This is what, you know, my family is doing. You also want to have something to say. If you're the only one who has boundaries, then they're going to look at you, ah, okay, so now you're the, you, you, you have, you have bound, they're not going to say it to you like that, but they're going to say it to you, say it to you in a way that you're going to know that they, they see that you've changed and you don't want that energy between you and them. You want them, you want to be like them, you know, because if you're not like them, then you can no longer relate to them and they can no longer relate to you and you need that friendship. So you have to stop needing these kind of friendships. You know, understand and trust that you will get other friends. You will get other friends that have boundaries, you know. Um, so that's why you, that's why you have this, this fear of not making it, not, not making it. Um, the other thing is that um, sometimes you don't want to, you, you don't want to have boundaries because you fear that if you have boundaries, if you say no to people, especially people that take care of you, you're going to lose that care. Let's say if your child's father gives you money or maybe your mem members of your family help you babysit your kids or they help you in different, many different ways and you start saying no, this fear that you have in you that if I say no, then they're going to stop doing this thing, these things for me, then uh, that's what stops you from saying no. That's what stops you from having these boundaries, you know, and... Um, that's the benefit you're getting from it. The benefit to you is more important to you than having boundaries. 